This is a video on using custom Comfy UI workflows inside the Krita AI Diffusion plugin and also manually making or adapting your own. Custom workflows can add extra functionality that the current plugin might not support yet or that might never be built in due to different factors. This can include day one releases of new image and video models or even just support for less popular models or meme web UI holdout methods like a detailer. You can also just use them to make custom filters like the ones Krita's own version of Gimmick provides. Or also, since Krita doesn't really have macros like most other art programs, you can also use them as a sort of automation for certain image tasks, as long as there's a custom node that matches an intended equivalent Krita function anyway. And there are a ton of nodes, so there might indeed be one. However, in general, I would recommend custom workflows for things that don't already have a native Krita function, either Krita on its own or the functions provided by the Krita AI plugin. This means you could download and use an ultra spaghetti monster over convoluted meme in painting workflow, or just use Krita AI's built-in in-painting, which means just select something and then press refine. But don't let me stop you from using any meme workflow, because you still have the freedom to hook up anything you want to Krita AI via custom workflows, at least anything that outputs an image or multiple ones, which simply means understandably no audio, but also a tiny bit of limited text output. Basically, an image gets sent to Comfy UI's spaghetti pipes, either what's currently visible on the entire canvas or just a specific layer, and then you receive that processed image back in the form of a new image layer. Same as the regular results from the Krita AI plugin. You can also send and receive multiple images too, as is the case for video. However, this video focuses only on the sending and the receiving of those images and not on the spaghetti pipes themselves. I can only tell you how to place the top and bottom buns of the burger, but how much spaghetti you put in between them is up to you. First off, here's how you can use custom workflows that are already made specifically for Krita. Here's an example using one of the WAN video workflows from my last video, W-I-N-K. There are two simple methods. The first is downloading the workflow, then go to the folder shown here. It should be in Users, App Data, Roaming, Krita, AI Diffusion, Workflows, then simply copy and paste the workflow there. And the second, even simpler method, just select Graph from the dropdown inside Krita AI's main panel. Then click on the folder button, then select the .json file you want to import. However, for both of these methods, you will need to change the names of the models in the workflow to match the ones you downloaded yourself. And the second method will outright give you an error if you don't have all the custom nodes needed by that workflow. So instead, I recommend doing it with this third method that's a bit more involved, but will guarantee the workflows work as intended. This method is also how you can make your own custom workflows and also how you can adapt regular Comfy UI workflows not made specifically for Krita, so it's also useful for when we get to that section. Simply open Comfy UI and then drag and drop that workflow inside Comfy UI to load it. You can open Comfy UI by opening your web browser of choice and then going to the web address shown or directly from Krita by clicking on the Comfy UI button. If you have Comfy UI Manager installed, opening the workflow should also prompt you to download all the custom nodes needed by that workflow. Note that Comfy UI Manager isn't installed if you're using the local managed server option inside Krita AI, so you will have to manually install it yourself. If you are using a separate Comfy UI portable or a Git cloned install, you also should really already have it manually installed if you haven't. To install it, especially for the local managed server, simply download and install Git in case you don't already have it from the page shown here and also linked in the description. Just install it with the default options. Then go to your Comfy UI folder. For the local managed server, you can find this folder by going to the Krita AI plugin settings and in connection, local managed server, then opening that location in Windows Explorer or the equivalent for other operating systems. Then inside that Comfy UI folder, you should find a folder called Custom Nodes. Open that folder, then open the command prompt there. Simply go to Explorer's address bar, then type CMD or right click in that window and open Terminal if you have your terminal set to open CMD as default. Then simply type the command shown here. You can find all these technical bits in the description. Also do all this with Krita closed if you're using the local managed server or with Comfy UI closed if you use a standalone Comfy UI, again, if you somehow didn't have Comfy UI Manager installed there. Note that if you get an error saying the Git command can't be executed, you might need to restart Windows right after installing Git. And if you still get that error even after restarting Windows, you might need to reinstall Git. Also, a very important thing to know for the local managed server is that all custom nodes get deleted every time there's a new update to the Krita AI plugin. This means Comfy UI Manager will also get deleted. So if you're really serious about using custom workflows, I would recommend instead moving to a standalone Comfy UI install instead. You can find a detailed install guide in the description. Now, if all this worked, you should see a blue Manager button on the top bar inside Comfy UI. You can use this to install any custom nodes that might be needed by the workflow or also any node you might want in general. 
Now, when you drag and drop a regular Comfy UI workflow, you will still get a prompt telling you which nodes are missing. But then you can use Comfy UI Manager's Install Missing Custom Nodes option to download and install them. Note that, with regular Comfy UI workflows, you can still see and move around the workflow as normal after closing the missing nodes window, and you can see the missing nodes with a red outline. However, at least currently, any custom workflow that's already saved in Krita AI's format won't let you do this, which means the workflow won't open at all until you install all the missing nodes. That will make it a bit trickier to install all custom nodes, especially if the author of that workflow didn't list them all. Also, even with regular workflows, Comfy UI Manager won't always pick up all the missing nodes, so you will still need to look up and install those missing nodes manually. For those cases, I would recommend selecting the names of the missing nodes to right-click and copy them, or use Ctrl and C, then looking them up in a search engine. Most search engines will usually show accurate results and point you in the right direction, especially if a missing node is really a part of what could be called a node pack, as some nodes are really a collection of multiple ones. The runcomfyui.com website, as shown here, is also a good place to look up these nodes, and you can also see here the name of the nodes pack you'll need to install. If you are the one making custom Krita workflows, I would recommend providing a list of all the needed nodes in your download page to make their usage easier. I didn't know all this at first either to be honest. Also, as a general security note, especially for general Comfy UI workflows, I would recommend only installing nodes found inside Comfy UI Manager. That means, if a kind of sketchy workflow is asking you to get a kind of sketchy custom node that isn't listed in Comfy UI Manager, and that you can only get through a kind of sketchy GitHub page just created recently, I probably wouldn't use it at all, at least not until that node is installable through Comfy UI Manager. If even nodes in Comfy UI Manager have been compromised in the past, then it's even sketchier to get nodes that aren't listed there. Though I also wouldn't be ultra paranoid about every node, just exercise regular caution. Also, the security in Comfy UI Manager has gotten better, so the nodes listed there should generally be safer than before. Now, once you have all custom nodes ready, you should be able to use that workflow. You can also select the necessary models from their respective loader nodes so they match the ones you have downloaded. For example, if you are using a different GGUF model than the one the custom workflow set up by default. Then, to finally use that inside Krita while having that workflow open inside Comfy UI on your web browser, open Krita and connect to the Comfy UI server, which should be automatic if you use the local managed server and also if you already have set up a standalone install. Then go to the graph section and from the dropdown select the Comfy UI web option that has a bunch of numbers after the web part. If you don't see it in the dropdown, simply go to Comfy UI on your browser, then run the workflow once with the run button and cancel it right away with the red X button. Then go back to Krita and the Comfy UI web option should now be there. This web option will let you interface directly with Comfy UI open in your browser, and thus with the workflow that's currently open and especially also active. That means if you have multiple workflows open in Comfy UI, only the workflow from the actively selected tab in Comfy UI will show up inside Krita. Then you can test this workflow directly inside Krita to verify that everything is working correctly. If it does, you should see your results show up inside Krita, and then you can apply them to a layer in the same way that it works for any other regular Krita AI function. If it doesn't, you'll see an error message that will probably tell you what you need to fix. For example, the models needed by the workflow might not be set right. Comfy UI itself usually also shows some indicators and messages, like a red outline on the nodes that might need correction. Then finally, if the workflow is working as intended, you can save it with the Save Workflow to File button. Simply give it a name and click OK. Then you can use this workflow directly in Krita, without having to connect to Comfy UI every time on your browser. Then you can find this workflow inside your app data roaming Krita AI Diffusion Workflows folder if you need to edit it again in Comfy UI, or also share it, or even back it up or delete it. Note that you won't see the Comfy UI web option in the Krita AI graph dropdown if there aren't any Krita specific nodes inside a workflow open in Comfy UI, which is the perfect lead into the next section. Making Krita workflows from scratch, and also modifying regular Comfy UI workflows for Krita, is relatively easy using this Comfy UI web interface especially for modifying regular Comfy UI workflows you can find online, as if you try to import them as is using the import workflow from file option in Krita AI, you'll also get an error because they won't have the necessary Krita nodes. You can find all the necessary Krita nodes inside Comfy UI. If you have a working Krita AI Diffusion install, you already have these nodes. Simply go to Comfy UI and the Nodes tab on the left, then scroll through the list until you find the Krita folder and expand it. Note that if you instead search for Krita in the search bar, you will be missing one important node from the search results that doesn't have Krita in its name. Let's go through all these nodes one by one. Note that depending on the workflow, you probably won't need all of them and will only need a couple. Let's start by the last node you'll need, as in the last node you should place in your workflow, but also the most important. The Krita output node is the one that will send all the results back to Krita itself. This includes not only a single image, but also multiple ones in the case for video. 
For a regular Comfy UI workflow, use this node to replace Save to Image or Save to Video nodes. These save nodes are usually at the very end of the spaghetti pipes and sometimes right after a VAE decode node, but not always. Basically, connect this node to the second to last node in a workflow that outputs a final image or a final video, which is really multiple final images. Now, there are a couple of ways to send an image from Krita to the spaghetti pipes. The first one is through the Krita canvas node. Its image connection will send anything that's currently visible on the canvas. This means it will be sent exactly as you are currently seeing it, regardless if it's all split on different layers. Basically, it's as if the content is sent as a flattened layer. Its width and height connections are also useful for nodes that need that information. This will, understandably, take into account the current size of the canvas. If you resize or scale your canvas, then the result will also automatically correspond to that new canvas size. The seed connection is also important for nodes that need it. If a node doesn't have an auto-randomized seed option, then you might get the same result over and over. So setting this connection will enable seed randomization and thus expected variety. You can then control the seed using this circle button in the Krita AI Docker. You can set a fixed seed or leave it unchecked for randomized seeds. Keep in mind you can use this node and any other Krita node really alongside others depending on the intended function, even if you don't connect all the parameters. This means you might not need the image connection, but you might still use it to send width and height or just control the seed. You can also use the Krita image layer node to only send the contents of a specific layer. This means even if your visible canvas is all cluttered, only that specified layer will be processed. This is also useful for sending the contents of animation layers and thus all the individual frames contained in them. Note that I'm not sure if the contents of the layer are cropped to canvas size before being processed. So if you get a size error, especially if your layer's contents are bigger than what's visible, you might want to crop that layer first. Also note that transparency isn't processed and instead anything transparent will be processed as a black color. So you might also want to merge down any layer that has transparent bits with a solid color or white layer or rather, transparency isn't processed by most models. But I think the Krita AI plugin might indeed send transparent info for models that do support it. It can definitely receive transparency from models that do output transparent images, such as this example with WAN 2.1 Alpha. You can also send a specific layer as a mask layer, useful for inpainting. And for inpainting to work at all, or really what is just a selection, you will fittingly need to use the Krita selection node. Otherwise, if you don't use the selection node, even if you select something, the entire layer or canvas will be processed instead. This selection node is also tricky because you'll have to connect it to corresponding mask-specific nodes, sometimes multiple ones, that might not be as familiar to you as regular non-selection nodes. Like me, I'm not good at that specific selection spaghetti, to be honest. However, as a guide, you can use a Krita AI dumped workflow to help build your own spaghetti maze. Simply go to the Krita AI plugin settings, go to interface and enable dump workflow on the bottom. Then simply select something and press generate or lower the strength slider and press refine. Then you can find that dumped workflow inside your app data, roaming, Krita, AI diffusion logs folder. Then you can open that workflow.json inside Comfy UI and see how the selection noodles are connected and adapt that to your own workflow. Then there's also the Krita style node. This will send the listed information corresponding to a selected Krita AI style preset. Remember, you can make your own style presets in the Krita AI settings under styles, and thus this node will send that info. This includes the model, the corresponding clip of that model architecture, the VAE, the positive and negative style prompts inside that style preset, the sampler and scheduler, the steps and the CFG. Note that, understandably, any other info aside from that in a style preset won't be sent, such as Laura's. Also note that I'm not sure, but I'm sure enough that this only works for models natively supported by Krita AI. This means if you set up a style preset, say for a video model, it won't work. So you'll have to set up their model loaders and other required nodes separately. And finally, there's the parameter node, also a very important node. This node will let you control any parameters that it's hooked to directly inside Krita. While some Krita nodes like layer nodes automatically put their parameters inside the graph section, you'll need a parameter node to control most other nodes. Simply connect its value connection to the connection dot that's usually to the left side of a parameter as shown here. Then that value will appear inside Krita and thus can be controlled. This can be a text input box, a slider, or a dropdown. The node usually changes accordingly. You can have as many parameter nodes as you want, depending on how much control you want to have over a workflow. This means if a model doesn't need to be changed, you don't have to connect a parameter node to it. But if you need to tweak steps or type up a prompt, then you'll need to connect a parameter node to the corresponding nodes. You will also need to tweak parameter nodes that are number type, depending if you want to have decimals or just whole numbers. For example, for steps you usually want whole numbers instead of fractions. In that case, simply set the type to number integer instead of the default number. You can also set default values here, and that's the value that will already be set when you load that workflow in Krita.
You can also set min and max values here. This is useful if you don't want really long sliders, like a workflow that might only need 10 steps max instead of 100, thus making it easier to tweak those values. Also note that, while the number integer option sticks once you save your workflow in Krita, if you open that back up in Compi UI, it will be reset back to regular number, so just keep that in mind, to change it again if you don't want decimal values. Notice too that you can name your parameter nodes, and also a couple of other Krita nodes like layer nodes. These names will also be reflected inside Krita. This is important because, not only will it make it easier to identify a parameter, but it will also let you adjust how the parameters are ordered inside Krita. The parameter nodes themselves don't have a parameter to control the order in which they are shown in Krita, but you can adjust this with their name instead. Simply put a number like 1 at the start, and then that parameter will be at the top, then a 2 for the second parameter, a 3 for the third, and so on. You can also use letters like A, B, C, and so on, though numbers take priority. However, one important final note about parameter nodes is that there can be a very small amount of special nodes that due to their special nature can't really be hooked back into Krita as a parameter. For example, this node for controlling wan animate masks. Just the way the masking points work in this node means there's no real way to hook this to Krita. There's also this node for enabling or disabling node groups. Since Krita AI doesn't really support node groups, as they aren't really needed since they're just a way to organize things inside ComfyUI's interface, that switch node also can't be hooked up. For those cases, you could either find an alternative node, for example you can use Florence instead of the mask node for honestly better results in some cases, or if you don't mind going back and forth, you could also still hook up most of the spaghetti to Krita and just control those special nodes in ComfyUI. Also, don't worry too much about it, as 99% of the nodes in ComfyUI are more straightforward and thus can be hooked without issue to Krita. Though that might or might not change in the future as more nodes are released, it might get more complex. And finally, for real this time, the send text node, so easily forgotten. This will indeed send some basic text information back to Krita that you can find above the results section of the Krita AI Docker. For example, for this WAN workflow, it shows how many frames were really processed, useful in case you were only sending one frame, instead of all the intended ones. And thus, once you have all your nodes connected to your own spaghetti, or to other spaghetti you might have downloaded, you can also test your workflow using the Comfy UI web option as explained before, and then finally save that workflow for use in Krita. Here's a quick example connecting this built-in workflow from Comfy UI for the recently released Chrono Edit. First I'm just replacing the model loader node with a GGUF node since that's the model I downloaded. Then, I'm replacing the load image node with a Krita canvas node. You can also use a layer node instead if you want. I'm also hooking the width and height to the corresponding values of the WAN node and the seed to the k-sampler node. Then, I'm just hooking parameter nodes to control them in Krita. Most importantly, the prompt node and also the sampler and scheduler to test some out. The rest of the values seem like they don't need to be changed, so there's no need to hook parameter nodes to them. And finally, I'm replacing the save image node with a Krita output node to send the result to Krita. And thus, you can see the final result directly inside Krita applied as a new layer. Hopefully this video has been useful in some way. I'm not really good at spaghetti, but hopefully you can see how relatively easy it is to hook other spaghetti for delicious consumption inside Krita. Just a couple of starter nodes, the top bun, and then just the Krita output node, the bottom bun. Thanks for watching.